Firstly, before I begin this tutorial, I'd like to thank John Montgomery of PhD for allowing us to use the footage. If you're really serious about your visual effects, it's certainly worth looking at taking a course over at PhD, and it's a great place that if you want to learn PF Track, the Pixel Farm's premier match moving program, you can use this software for educational purposes under VPN. So let's take a look at the shot that launched a thousand showreels. So let's play this through and you'll see why it's such a good shot to use as an example in tracking. We actually already have a reasonable solution. It's probably about 80% there. There's a few wiggles in it, but hopefully we'll be able to get those sorted out so we've got a 100% track by the end of this tutorial. I'm going to start from scratch here and in fact just load up the car plate and without anything else just go ahead and track and see what happens. By doing a straight auto track on the imported footage the trackers have marked all over the car which is one of the reasons why we wanted to use a garbage map as obviously these points are all incorrect. The other option is to go in manually and remove all these for each frame. I'll quickly go through this frame, cleaning up and telling you why each point I'm cleaning up, and then I'll edit again and come back having done the whole 96 frames. First of all, I'm just clicking and holding and lassoing around the car. That'll get rid of all these points. Obviously the shadow is incorrect. We know the car's incorrect. But also one thing to watch out for are highlights and shadows and reflections that can also be tracked incorrectly. So now pressing delete, we get rid of those. And I'm now going to just go through the footage, just left and right. And again, anything in the sky is going to be pretty useless to us. So we can just, while we're hovering over them, press delete and that will get rid of that this track here, although it sort of looks good, I think some of these horizons, they might be jumping around, and again, a good way to see this is just to move and just keep your eye and see whether the actual tracking points jump around from where they are. Having cleaned up the sky and the car, we now need to go through and again, just double double check that you're not getting any errors and another good way of seeing this, if we hover over each of these tracking points, what you can actually see, and this one in particular, is it's got a kink at the end and a kink in the middle. Now we know it's a smooth motion of camera. These kinks must be the actual tracking point dodging around, mistracked. We need to delete it. So again, pick another point press delete and again with these you can see they've got jiggles in them and this is where going through literally piece by piece you don't want to erase too many but the ones that are obviously wrong need to go again down here this tracker we know that's not correct this one here prime example delete again this one here a right zigzag it's gotta go what I would suggest at this stage is to keep saving your shot and giving it an increment of say a letter so if you're doing version 4 say for A B C and at each stage if you find that you do a solution and you've deleted too many points you can just go back rather than have to retrack you can go back to an earlier version that had enough points and just make sure that you don't delete too many again. Once you're happy with your cleanup, the next stage is to estimate the focal length and scene orientation. What we can do now is click and hold, drag this, say use the car as the example, just bring this into place until you're happy about where it should be and then solve. 
Now we have our solution, we can look at it in 3D. Using the left mouse button, we can rotate. Using the Alt and left mouse button and moving the mouse, we can zoom. And using the left mouse button and shift, we can actually translate across our point cloud. This is actually quite dense and would be confusing when we actually export this to a 3D application or compositing package. Now we're happy with our solution, what we actually need to do is tidy up our export and also make sure that we're happy with our actual overall scene position and orientation. I'll play this through and then you can see as we go through different areas go from white to green to red. When they're green or red they can be deleted in the 2D view. When they're white they're fixed. Back in the 2D view to delete these points just use the lasso and delete button or hover and delete button. Thus again going through and as more become visible getting rid of the ones you don't want. And again I'll edit and come back once that's been done. All I've got left now are the points representing the bollards at the back of shot and then these points here which represent the marks on the road. We could have done this before but I'm going to do it now as all these points I know are virtually on the ground apart from the tips of the bollards. I'm going to return to the 2D view using the spacebar, take rotate, and then just see how we're out of the back. Return to the 3D view. Looking pretty good. And there's one final thing we can do. If I go back again to 2D, and I'm going to pick that point there, spacebar again, and move origin to feature, and that is looking pretty good. I can now export my data to be used in any of these applications. And this is the final PFHO camera data imported into Nuke in a 3D environment. Well that wraps this tutorial, if there's anything you didn't understand or need further clarification let me know in the forums and I'll try to address them in further tutorials.